Hello YouTube, Vlogging Eric Strands here and this week my video is about the 2015 Super Cheap Auto Bathurst 1000. It was one of the most interesting and most painful for both drivers and marshals Bathursts ever. There was controversy, huge crashes, great racing, tension about classification and a satisfying finish. Let's go through each of the major points I'll be going over in this video. First up, controversy. And the main controversy over the course of the weekend broke down into one main thing. Renee Gracie and Simona Di Silvestro. Both Dick Johnson and David Reynolds were caught up in it. Firstly, Dick Johnson when he said that the duo wouldn't go close to finishing the 161 lap epic on Sunday. Now, I will say that I actually agreed with some of what Dick Johnson said, but my criticism of what he said was more at poor wording. I actually predicted that Renee Gracie's inexperience would catch her out of the mountain. And that was what? Renee Gracie's first time at the mountain? Second time, maybe? I think she ran the Carrera Cup in 2014 at Bathurst, but never in a V8 supercar. Sadly, that turned out to be true, as I'll get to later. Then David Reynolds decided to make a very stupid joke where he referred to the Rene Gracie and Simone Di Silvestro car as the Pussy Wagon. Which smacked him with a $25,000 fine, left him very apologetic, and left him with a pretty bad label for the rest of his career. So now we move on to the next day, and the worst non-fatal crash in the history of Bathurst and the first of several very hard hits for multiple drivers across not just V8 supercars, but the Aussie racing cars as well. Coming down the dipper at 170 kilometers per hour, that's more than 100 mile an hour in American speak, Chaz Mostert on his first qualifying lap clipped the inner wall of the dipper. The car is fired straight into the outside wall, then across the track along that wall around to the other side of the track, riding across the top of the barrier, almost going over that, taking out the marshal stand near Forrest's elbow, leaving several marshals and Mostert injured, the car ride off and Mostert out for the rest of the season. Because of the severity of the crash and the damage to the marshal stand, the remainder of the day was postponed. It was a terrifying crash and something needs to be done to avoid that happening again. Because, I'll be honest, next time, the driver and all the marshals may not be so lucky. Had Mostert actually gone over the wall, he and all seven marshals would probably be dead. So qualifying for the race was rescheduled to midday the following day. But before that happened, a second horrifying crash. This time in the Aussie racing cars for Damien Flack. Link to this crash also in the description along with Mostert's crash. Where Damien was bumped by his brother going down Conrod Strait, the fastest section of racetrack in Australia. The car then hit the wall and flipped six times, including going over the wall. With the car catching fire afterwards. Flack was seriously injured in the crash, breaking a dozen ribs, suffering a punctured lung and other injuries. That was, if anything, even scarier than Mostert's crash. That was just unreal. You're doing more than 230 kilometers an hour in the Aussie racing cars, and they are very light, so they flip easily, especially at high speed. Even slight bumps can send a car flying and flipping over and over. But that wasn't the only scary crash in the Aussie racing cars. Later that day, Craig Woods and Sam Milton collided near McPhillamy Park, leaving one car on its side against the barrier and against the other car. Unfortunately, due to the overshadowing of this crash by Flax Crash, I have no link for the video. So, qualifying for the V8 Supercars, Bathurst 1000. First part of the session was dry, but then the rain came about halfway through the session. Fabian Coulthard and Luke Yulden qualified fastest in the event, with Shane Van Gisbergen and Jonathan Webb in second, Tim Slade and Tony D'Alberto in third, and Jamie Winkup and Paul Dumbrell fourth. The entire top 10 shootout was done in the rain, so the times were much slower and the margins between each time were significantly larger due to the varying conditions on the track. David Reynolds and Dean Canto were the fastest pairing after making the top 10 shootout in 8th. Scott McLaughlin and Alexander Premer was second after they qualified 7th. Fabian Coulthard and Luke Yulden, Tim Slade and Tony D'Alberto, Jamie Winkup and Paul Dumbrell, and Shane Van Gisbergen and Jonathan Webb all struggled and wound up in the bottom half of the top 10, along with Scott Pye and Marcus Ambrose. Now, on to the race itself. 
And the award for the last place finisher came after just 15 laps when car number 34's engine failed just 15 laps in. Renee Gracie's inexperience came in here as her car hit the oil and she crashed heavily into the forest elbow barrier, bringing out the first of four cautions in this race for a total of 10 laps. Renee's team managed to get the car back out on the track and it was a race against time for the number 200 as they needed to have started their 121st lap before the leaders greeted the chequered flag to be classified as finishers. I detailed everything that happened in the race on my blog, link in the description. So on to other matters. Four cautions. The second was for Carl Reinler and Tim Blanchard and entangling with Ant Pedersen and Andre Heingardner. The car triple one of Andre Heingardner and Ant Pedersen was sent into the wall and that ended their race. Reinler and Blanchard's car was penalised and later on they would have the first of two major accidents at Reed Park. Firstly, Tim Blanchard clipped the wall at McPhillamy Park on the run to Reed Park. Then, having too much momentum to make the corner, they went in very heavily into the wall at Reed Park. He was unhurt, but Scott Pye, who would crash at the same place just 19 laps to go after a suspension failure, wasn't so lucky. Pye hit hard enough to break a rib, leaving him in doubt for the next round of Surfers Paradise this weekend. The 24th. 16 lead changes, and the lead was shared between 11 drivers and 8 driver pairings, with Jamie Winkup and Paul Dumbrell leading the most laps of the race at 68, with eventual race winners Craig Lowndes and Stephen Richards leading 34 laps, Scott McLaughlin and Alexander Premer leading 29, David Reynolds and Dean Cantor leading 18, both Shane Bagusberger and Jonathan Webb, along with Lee Holdsworth and Sebastian Bourdais, led three laps. Jack Perkins and Russell Ingle led two, and the Davison brothers, Will and Alex, leading four. Only five cars retired from the race, which is a low number for the Bathurst 1000. Kudos to the wildcard entry of Drew Russell and Aaron Russell, who managed to stay out of trouble and, despite the car starting to smoke late in the race, managed to come home on the lead lap in 17th. Also kudos to the team of the number 200 of Simona Di Silvestro and Renee Gracie for getting the car repaired, taking an hour and 15 minutes, and getting them out to complete enough laps, 121, to be classified as finishers. Also, another dumb fuck move by Jamie Winkup, second year in a row. Just like last year, Jamie ignored team orders and was caught out massively for it. Last time I was running out of fuel in the final lap, this year it was ignoring orders to pit and driving past the safety car after the Scott Pye crash, which got him a drive through penalty and left him finishing 18th. Two years in a row, JB. Next time, listen to your fucking crew, you egomaniac! The race was mixed conditions. The first part of the race was dry, part of the race was wet, then the last part of the race was dry, and that made the race much more interesting. Shane Van Gisbergen, in his attempts to keep his wet weather tyres cool as the track dried out, ran his left-hand side tyres on the Conrod Strait grass on two or three occasions, just like he did at the last wet races at Eastern Creek. That guy has balls of steel to do that. He even puts the commentators' hearts in their mouths every time he does that. Finally, crowd attendance broke the 200,000 mark, with 201,416 people attending the four-day event. I really want to go to Bathurst. I really do. But I have university to attend to, so that dream will be a few years away yet. Just a stopgap video for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've got a few response videos coming up over the next few weeks. I'll get onto that in ASAP and post them over the next few weeks, hopefully. Visit my links. Tell me what you think in the comments. Rate this video. Share it around. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And have a great day, everyone.